Good morning, everyone. How is it today? Good, good. Good, thanks. How are you? Okay, so let's begin today's session then. Back in next trip, just gently close the eye. Start observing the breath. Observe the natural flow of the breath as you inhale and slowly begin to take a more breath. Body is stable, mind is calm, ready for chanting. Say it completely and then. Feel the vibrations. Join the arms together and join the toes and the foot arms together. Place them on the eyes. Nice little knee that you can put it down to the knee. It's a lot of it. Begin to so yesterday we talked a little bit about hatha yoga, what it means, and how you are also practicing a variation of hatha yoga. So you have to be very mindful when you are going forward, especially your asana and pranayama practices, because if you do them in haste, hurry, you stretch your body too much or control your breath when your body isn't allowing it, right? It can have an adverse effect on the body as well, right? So be very careful whenever you are 
even practicing in pranayama class that you're not crossing your capacity because you have to keep your body with you your body is actually going to aid you and assist you to achieve your goals so you don't have to beat your body up just because you know you have set a timeline or a goal for yourself it's quite the opposite your body is the you know vessel which is going to uh, uh, aid you to achieve all your goals right so if you get an injury it's going to take a lot of time to recover and you will fall back in your practice so be very careful okay so today we are actually discussing a uh, very you know uh, common topic but quite interesting which is lifestyle for yoga practitioner right we are all now become yoga practitioners as you join the course no matter what your goal is becoming a teacher for your own spiritual development for your health anything no matter what goal you come with now you have come to practice yoga and when you come to practice yoga you become a yoga practitioner right so now no matter what you do after this one month with whatever knowledge you get for now you are a practitioner of yoga and there are certain things that you have to take care of when you are a practitioner of yoga there are certain things in the lifestyle which you know Uh, come in your lifestyle when you are practicing yoga and you have to take care of these things as well when you are you know practicing yoga so let me first touch upon you know the word lifestyle so it's actually a way of living right so whenever we say we have a healthy lifestyle or uh, you know somebody has a healthy lifestyle what we actually mean is the way in which that person is living is beneficial or can be harmful right so in the beginning of the class we were trying to do yoga is not really just you know something that you intellectualize uh, it's not something that uh, you know is separate you take out time to separately study it no you have to implement it in your life and that is the entire uh, you know a sense of yoga philosophy whenever we have a philosophy classes yes there is some knowledge and background that we need to know of. so sometimes it will get factual more factual than you know this aspect but most of the things you will see will be able to implement in your life right so whenever we talk of things like you know how one has to conduct themselves or how one has to live their life it all becomes practical nothing about it is theory only the information that i will give you will seem to be a theoretical like from a theoretical point of view however the application is where you need to work right so i can give you all the information but in order to understand all of those things you are going to implement those things right so understanding is something that only comes with implementation knowledge we have loads of it out there so focus on implementing as many things as you can in your life especially when we discuss this topic so what is a healthy lifestyle the first question that pops up in your mind when you think of your what is health right anything in your life which will you know, give you the space to grow one thing is that growth is very necessary when you are you are adopting a way of living there is always some growth that you should experience so either you can go your graph can go down or it can go up right so we are focusing what one thing graph goes up and there is potential to go uh, uh, for the graph to go up right so there is no stopping point you keep working and you keep growing as you go right so whenever you you know let me take the example of asana practice only so day one you start you see that okay i have to work so much and then by day 20 25 you see that right now you have little bit less to work right but there is still work that you need to put in so this is leading to your growth over those 20 25 days one thing is that and then you know that even after your classes end there is 
work that you still need to do, right? So there is upward movement and there is still potential for you to achieve more and more. So one thing is that whenever you adopt a lifestyle, this is one quality you should look for, no matter what habit you inculcate in your life, right? Another thing which is very important is that there is harmony, right? If I am doing something and it is disrupting my peace, it's disrupting the harmony within and outside, both are very important, right? So within, I can see a direct impact, you know, why would I... Uh, indulge in a situation which always makes me angry. So this I will try to avoid, right? But my actions also cause an impact on the external environment around me, like the external environment is going to cause an impact on me. So always go for things in your life which uh, at least minimize the harm of the things, uh, uh, you know, harm to the environment around you. Right? At least to minimize and if you can avoid completely, that is amazing. Right? So, you know, uh, a very common example of this is sometimes, you know, we go to a shop and we buy plastic, right? So that plastic we do not end up using and all of us know that it's not degradable, right? So it is my lifestyle. Even buying, you know, a plastic, uh, single-use plastic, it counts as a lifestyle choice, you know? So with that lifestyle choice, I'm harming something around me. So try to cut down on these things as much as possible because you do not need those things. You want those things, right? And as you go deeper into yoga, you will see the deep connection between you and the external environment. So it's the nature which supports us. So if you're going to destroy it, is it going to support us anymore? Oh, right? So being very mindful of the choices and making sure there is peace and harmony within and outside. Another amazing way to make a lifestyle choice. This is your standard, another standard. Another thing in which your body remains healthy and you are able to attain stamina, right? So suppose you go for, this is a very common example, people go and gym, right? So when they go and gym, Yes, great, your body remains healthy. But after that one hour of the they go and they fall asleep. Right? So the body needs so much time to recover from that intense exercise that they do. So even though it is working on increasing the stamina, it is somewhere draining the body. That mode of physical activity is actually draining the body out more than it is giving to the body. And whenever we do yoga, now you have come to you, you could have gone to gymnastics if you were merely looking for flexibility, right? We, were, we have discussed it. So when you come to you, you will see that a uh, great yoga classes when after the practice you feel energized. But after the practice, your body gains energy instead of losing energy. Why? Because now you are aware of each and every breath. You know, even in your Ashtang Vinyas class, Vinyas class, again and again, your teachers are going to tell you, you know, this movement, then inhale, then this movement, exhale. So as soon as you become aware of your breathing, your body and each movement, you become aware of these things. Hence, a good yoga practitioner is always connected to the body, will never end up having an injury or overstretching. Because there is such a deep connection during the session with oneself, right? And this is actually going to uh, increase your productivity or efficiency throughout the day. If you go and gym in the morning and do those intense heavy workouts, it's very probable that throughout your day, you might be feeling very lethargic because it was too much. And there was no focus on the breath any which way loud music plays in gyms, right? People like to enjoy that, lift heavy weights as much as possible, cross their capacity, right? So there's so much disconnection in the world. So when you have come into your focus on this connection so that your productivity and efficiency increases during the day. If you go for a yoga session in the morning, you will see your efficiency increases in fact. It supports the activities of the entire day. So another thing to add to your lifestyle is 
your activity should increase the productivity. If you're feeling lethargic even after your yoga practice, that means you're not doing it correctly. You need to keep a very strong check, very keen eye on how you are practicing. You know, what intention is in your mind? And practice accordingly. It's so important. Because then it becomes a part of your lifestyle. Your 23 hours will support your one hour of practice. It will not be the opposite, you know. One hour will support the rest 23 more. It's going to become opposite. You know, you will come across a lot of students who will come to you and say, you know, give me classes of you for weight loss. And as soon as you will talk to them about the diet, how they have to change their diet, they will not agree. So they want to do anything in those 23 hours and make sure that yoga sets off that work done in 23 hours. That one hour should be enough. Is it possible? If you think about it, what you're doing for the majority of your time is going to have an impact, right? And huge impact. So can you set it off with one or two hours? No. It's going to come into your life. And when it flows in your life, you are going to gain more, much more out of the one or two hours that you put into your practice. It's the same thing. Tell your students when they come to you with this thing. They have to work on their diet as well. They cannot leave it behind. Right? Everything is connected. So the first thing that I was actually going to discuss was food only, aha. A H A R E, aha, food. Like this is a very uh, popular topic. Uh, whenever students come there, you know, generally ask what sort of food should we eat. Even when you become teachers, this question is going to come up a lot. So you need to know a little bit about it, right? So as for the modern understanding. Food is uh, seen as a division of your carbohydrates, proteins, you know, minerals, vitamins, all of these things. That is how science breaks down the diet. Even if you go to a dietitian, they're going to break it down like this. You know, this much uh, carbohydrates or these many calories you have to consume. This is what you need to consume. This is what you don't need to consume. And these vitamins, these minerals, like this, you know, they're going to talk. So, as for the modern concept of diet, you know, this is the basis of the division of the diet. And even if someone doesn't believe in the yogic concept that I'm going to come to, you can at least tell them to have a balanced diet. That is the bare minimum that you can ask them to do, right? This is a requirement so that your practice is supported, right? Yeah. Questions? Okay. Great. All right. So, if somebody does not want to go very deep into the diet, yoga concept, you can at least have some deep balanced diet. Everything is balanced for them. Right? All the minerals, everything is entering into your body, keeping it healthy. Right? So when I come to the yogic concept of diet, the first thing that is discussed is Mithahar. Mith, M-I-P-A-H-A-R-A. Mithahar. This is something you will cover even in your Ayurvedic classes, but I will briefly touch up on this. Right? So Mith means sweet. And I think myth, this word means sweet, and ahar as well is food. Right? So, sweet food. What does one mean when they say sweet food? One thing is that, okay, very easily understood in sweet food, but no, it is actually talking something beyond it. Right? So, what is that beyond? The number of times that you chew your food. So, if you eat really fast, 
favorite all your meals for any reason you are fast eater or don't get that much time so we'll see you are not able to feel the sweetness in the food the more you chew the food you know the more you will be able to one feel the taste of the food and you have to chew it till that point where it becomes slightly sweet in your mouth so generally should chew one bite for 32 times okay this is when you will be able to experience the meaning of myth and myth the heart if you uh, chew each and every bite 32 times there is so much digestion that can take place in the mouth only and because we eat very fast you know and we gulp this gulping action you know when we gulp the food why because it isn't broken down properly in the mouth so you have to gulp right and it is an extreme action and we do it every day we do not even recognize this thing, right so the you know digestion that has to take place in the mouth doesn't take place so uh, you know the entire uh, disruption in the digestion process starts from here only when you do not give the food ample time like in the mouth because there is so much digestion that can take place only in the mouth and you know production of saliva when the food mixes with the saliva the saliva breaks down the food so when you chew very like do not chew the food properly just gulp it down right so you are indirectly it's not the stomach which is unable to digest right you are not giving the food a chance to break down in the mouth itself there is so much that you can still control if you have any digestive issues first start taking take your time to eat you know sit with your food eat take that time with covid this is one good thing that has happened with everybody being at home the only luxury we have is time right we have a lot of it you can make use of it so take your time when you eat wait for the food to you know mostly dissolve in the mouth only you will be surprised when you chew your food three times you will be surprised at how much breakdown has taken place in your mouth you know we are we are not aware of it because we are not practiced it so today what we can do is we can practice this thing okay. so today one meal you can give yourself that much time you can treat yourself with that much self care that you eat one meal properly okay so in your ayurveda classes you will go deeper in like how you have to consume the food you will go deeper in the posture and everything or maybe you have already covered it i don't know right so one thing is this. second thing is your food should always be agreeable right now i do not like something no matter how much nutrients that food is going to have my state of mind is not such that i can absorb so your state of mind also greatly varies how the food is going to be absorbed in the body right so never eat food when you are angry never eat food when you are going through some negative emotion relax sit breathe right? calm your mind down come to a balanced state and then consume your food it is very important that the state of the mind should be such that you are eating the food you know you are uh, in a state where you are understanding the mind is at least this much like you know, in the present that it knows that you are eating food if you are angry and you eat food go 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 but day is going to be not so good even when your parents they cook food especially you know uh, the mom when she cooks the food if she is angry everybody in the house will know that day that she is upset or angry because the quality of the food will change so the way in which the food is made is also very important very necessary so somebody who is in a, in an agitated state of mind if they cook is going to reflect in the food right 
So if someday you are agitated and you have to go food for sit down, breathe. Calm your mind, relax your mind, and then you go ahead and fulfill your responsibility. Right? Okay. Same example, if I take it from mom is really happy and you know you come after so many days back home and you know extreme love reflects, you know, when the parents see the kids after a very long period of time, and then your mom cooks. Such wonderful taste in it. Such beautiful taste. And she did nothing. She added the same spices. It's just her intention changed. And a very beautiful ingredient called love. She added that. And, you know, uh, I have a few friends who, like, often tell that when, you know, my mom, you know, uh, uh, takes, you know, a spool, a spoonful of rice or, you know, breaks the, we have roti over here, you know. I didn't know the English for it. Uh, we have this, uh, we have sabzi and roti, so some vegetable, and then we have this bread. You can say it's a sort of bread, which is made out of, uh, you know, wheat. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of my friends, they tell me so many times that when my mom, you know, takes a bite and, you know, uh, puts the vegetable in between and makes, uh, like makes them eat with their hand. You know, it tastes so different. Same food when they are eating by themselves, it's so different. And when their mom, you know, sits with them and makes them eat the food, like uh, makes uh, gives them the food in their mouth, it tastes so different. So it's just a very slight different uh, difference that is caused when you change the intention. So whenever you cook, add a lot of, you know, positive energy into the food that you cook, it's going to nourish you on levels you will not even realize, right? So it is a beautiful experience when somebody who loves us, you know, and we eat from their hands, right? So the taste of the food changes. So I'm sure most of you can understand what I'm trying to say over here, right? So the intention, I'm talking of the intention. So if you have to cook, if you have to eat, you have to check your state of mind before doing these things. We generally do not observe these things. We cook in an automatic mode. We go into this automatic mode where, you know, the activity is going on, mind is running somewhere else. No. Stay connected. Whatever you are doing. And add that intention. Right? Even you would have heard water has this quality of absorbing the energy very quickly. You know, if you put your bottle outside during night, and you wake up in the morning and drink that water, you will see that you feel very calm and peaceful. That water will acquire the quality of the moon. Peace and calmness. Right? So, same thing. Food also catches energy very easily. So, take care next time you're cooking or eating. Okay? Be aware. Right? So, myth. It has to be agreeable. And you have to have that state of mind. Another meaning. When we talk. Another thing which is added when we talk of matahar is the quantity. How one has to consume the food? What is the quantity in which one needs to consume the food? Right? So, it's generally said that half of your stomach should be filled with food. So, if, say, you know, uh, my stomach is divided in four parts. So two parts are filled with food. So whenever you consume food, make sure you do not eat till here. Some of us eat till here, right? Overeating. So it's not going to do you any good. It's going to place a lot of pressure on your digestive system. And hence, it is going to cause you lethargy. The same food which is supposed to energize you will end up causing lethargy to your body. And when it causes lethargy to your body, then understand you are not eating for your survival. You are eating out of your greed or your bond or your desire. Your body doesn't need that much. Right? Half of the stomach should be filled with food. One-fourth of the quantity is left for water. 
and one foot has to remain empty at all times. For us as yoga practitioners, it's very important that we follow this quantity. You will find the mention of this in a lot of Hatha Yoga texts also. Metaha is concept. The so one fourth is left for air, one fourth for water, and half for food. This is the division of the quantity. What quantity of food you have to take? Right? Another meaning of myth in Matahar, you know, generally when we go to the temple, uh, especially in Hindu tradition, whenever we have to offer something to God, right? So it's something sweet, you will see. Uh, you know, laddu. I don't know the exact English translation to this. But yeah, I mean, we offer laddu, we offer so many Indian sweets. Laddu is the kind of Indian sweet, right? So we offer so many Indian sweets to God, right? So this gives us a sense of detachment from food. So the word myth also reinforces this thing. Don't be attached to food. It's just a source of gaining energy. It's just a source of, for your body to survive. It's not more than that. So next time you are eating food, understand that it is there to make sure that you can survive, not more than that. So when you order your favorite food, you know, everybody eats in the hair, right? We all do. Because we're so attached to the food. We love the flavor so much, right? But that is not the purpose of eating food. The tongue is not the purpose of eating food. Making the body survive, Keeping it healthy is the purpose of food, right? So whenever we offer something to God, it to be sweet, so hence the word myth has been used. You know, in Indian tradition, we generally, when we sit to have food, one thing is, you know, we first chant some mantra. Even in Western tradition, you will see that they say grace, right? Just before food, they will join hands together and they will say grace. So it's a form of, you know, when you are worshipping. So, you know, it's something, you see your food as something which is good enough to be offered to God. That is how good your food should be. That it is good enough to be offered to God. That is what we mean by myth. Myth, once again, I'm explaining this. Another meaning also. Right? And in Indian tradition, we chant certain mantras before we eat food. So two reasons behind it. One is the energy of the mantra you know, itself creates that state of mind, relaxes the mind, right? When you chant the mantra and you offer it to God. So before eating, we <clears throat> offer a part of the food, at least in Indian tradition, we do a part of the food to God. So first thing to calm the mind, then we offer it to God. And when this entire process takes place, the time lag between the food coming in front of you and, you know, you actually consuming it. That will start the saliva production in the body. Because when you smell the food, right, when you smell your favorite food, think of any food that you love a lot. And, you know, you know that it is going to be prepared in 10 minutes. So, you, when you know it is getting prepared, you get that scent, you know, your mom is preparing something that you love a lot. And, no, you are just going up and down, up and down, waiting when it is going to get ready, right? And till then, those 10 minutes, they torture you. <laughs> Why? Because you can smell the food and you feel so hungry at that point of time. All of us do, right? So saliva production starts in the mouth when you bring this time lab before eating the food. So... First, saliva is already ready in the mouth. When you take the food, you chew it properly, so it mixes properly. And then it goes down the throat, right? Into your tummy, right? So, this is a very general meaning, very general intention I'm telling you that you need to set when you consume your food because, you know, everything we do in life is for food only, if you will observe. 
you go on, you do everything, so many things you do so that we can get food at the end of each day, right? And if you don't give food that time that it deserves, then it will not be very good. Right? So I have to make sure that everything, all of your energy throughout the day you put so that you can you know, eat that food. Somebody who is not working just okay, staying at home and cooking. Entire day goes around, you know. And the lockdown, especially I experienced this thing. So every day family discussion used to take place. What I going to have in the morning, then after breakfast, the discussion of lunch used to start. Then after lunch, the discussion of dinner used to start what I going to eat. So somebody who is not, who is just cooking the food, right? Not doing any other thing. Their life also revolves around what food you're going to have, right? So all of our lives are revolving around food. And if you do not give it time, then what are you working for? If you're not giving your food time, it's something to think about, right? next time you sit to eat clear your schedule say i'm not going to come till half an hour one hour i'm going to eat my food and when you will actually see somebody who eats food with you know, full concentration you will see they take a very long period of time so if you have any friend on the table you know who, who is a slow eater that person is doing it correctly and all of us are rushing eat the food. So, okay. so next time, this is one very important yoga concept of Nipahar. Right? Another basis on which uh, yoga concept derives that the food is actually on the basis of the quality. Right? So we will also cover this topic in the future classes of three gunas, the three qualities. No need to worry, I'm not writing it down now. When you will have the class, I will discuss. Okay. So, first quality is Sattvic food. This I will write. S A T T V I C. Sattvic. So, this is considered to be the most ideal form of food that should be consumed by yoga practitioners, now your yoga practitioners. So try to shift to as much sattvic food as you can during the day. What is sattvic food? First question that comes to mind. So sattvic food is actually you know, food which has high energy. You know in pranayam classes we have discussed the concept of prana and I told you everything has some level of prana in it. So your food has some level of prana in it. Some foods have less pranic value, some have high pranic value. Sattvic food has very high pranic value. So food items which have high pranic value come under the category of sattvic food. One thing is this. Second, they are easy, easy to digest. Okay, it is light food which is easy to digest so it doesn't cause a lot of uh, you know burden on your digestive system when you eat it it is easily digest it gives you the energy you need to carry on the processes that you need during your day right so very common example of sattvic food what comes under sattvic food is going to be your Vegetarian food, right? Something which is close to nature, right? So when uh, plants, they grow in nature, right? So this thing, they catch the quality. So, you know, in India, you will see uh, a lot of uh, herbs, a lot of uh, uh, vegetables are made out of, you know, uh, leafy vegetables are made. Uh, all the vegetables are mostly grown in some area or the other, right? So consume the vegetables that are grown in your area. That is another very important thing. So going for seasonal food. If you are consuming watermelon in December, right? So it's not 
belonging to that season you will still find it because you know we have taken out ways of preserving food we have taken out ways of growing food even when the season does not uh, you know uh, allow us right if the seasonal conditions are not such technology has advanced so much that we can still grow that food so you will see some vegetables you will find throughout the year even though they belong to a particular season and same goes with transportation transportation has become so easy that if something is grown in south india you will get it in north india but it is not suitable for their environment right because people who live in north india there is so much cold over there so their food mostly the food local food that they grow generates heat in the body it's very effective in generating heat in the body so wherever you are located go for local food and seasonal food right and another thing it is vegetarian food it has very high plant value so start start switching make small changes but start switching you will see a difference in your state of mind and the energy that you feel after the consumption of the food right and it's so necessary another or other things that fall under it are you know boiled vegetables again vegetables will come as so boiled eating boiled vegetables uh, consuming uh, fruits dry fruits as well you know, normal fruits and then dry fruits they are also they also come under the category of soft food and milk products but milk should be pure be very careful these days uh, fat uh, preserve so many preserve, uh, preservatives are being added and the milk also was demand is so high this is how we should do so make sure whenever you are consuming milk please from a pure source so these things will come under your sacred food category you will see sorry Rajas the maple tree, like kichdi, also another Indian dish that is prepared with rice and certain pulses, and then you put vegetables. Very easy to digest. You eat it after most of the shop karmas also. Right. So kichdi is another great example of sacred food. Then we have rajasik food. R J J A S R C rajasik. Second category of food that you will come across. So this kind of food is mostly eaten by people who are into very extreme physical activity. It's not extreme, but high level of physical activity they have in their life. So you will see like sports people who are into sports. They have very you know particular diet that they have to follow, and they mostly you know consume heavy food which will uh, you know give them Uh, that kind of because their body requires it, so very heavy, difficult to digest food, and it will have spices also. Some food will not have spices in it. At least you know they will have natural flavoring, or like things you know how you cook, how you infuse the flavor. That sort of food will have more, so we'll be able to get more taste for the food. We go for sort of food, but when you uh, for rice food, you will get taste of spices, right? So a lot of spices are added into the food. It is hard to digest. Okay. Then we come to the third category, tamasic. T A S I C. Tamasic food. This category of food is the least preferable. least preferable